As a person with ADHD, I know firsthand that although we can be great at doing many, many things, practicing real self-care and meeting our own true needs are often not one of them. And unfortunately, because of this, we can miss out on doing essential things that can help keep us happy and healthy and keep our lives from feeling like a constant uphill battle. So in today's video, we're going to talk about why we can have so much trouble with this and how to assess what our true needs really are so that we can begin to address them in an ADHD friendly way. So let's start with the most basic questions first. Why does it feel so hard to actually take care of ourselves and why does self-care itself never really seem to fix anything for us? Well, the answers really lie in how our brains are wired. We have an interest-based nervous system as opposed to an importance-based nervous system like neurotypical people, which means that we often don't feel like prioritizing the things that would be the most helpful to us because we can feel like they require too much effort, they aren't stimulating enough, or they're not immediately rewarding. And because of this, we tend to gravitate towards self-care practices that are easy, fun, and provide instant gratification which can serve a purpose and can feel pleasurable, but often don't offer any real long-term benefits or make any real improvements in our lives because we're still ignoring our deeper needs. In other words, many times what we call self-care consists only of things that feel good in the moment that do not in any way address the root cause of our actual issues, or we consistently prioritize our surface level needs or desires and in turn continue to allow bigger problems and needs to grow. Needless to say, neither of these strategies can make us feel better for more than a few moments. They also can't really be classified as true self-care, which by definition is the conscious effort to meet our own physical, mental, and emotional needs in a way that fosters a sense of well-being and allows us to flourish. The problem for many of us with ADHD is that we often don't really know what our deeper needs are or we don't know how or what to prioritize as needs because our executive dysfunction can make that a really complicated and frustrating process for us. Now, one framework that can be helpful in better understanding which areas of our life might need addressing is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is often depicted as a five-tier model of human needs in a pyramid. In a nutshell, the theory is that the needs lower down must be satisfied before we can attend to the needs higher up. So we can see that from the bottom of the hierarchy upwards, our needs are physiological, safety, love and belonging, esteem, and self-actualization. Now, if we're being really honest with ourselves, we can see that there are likely some pretty significant needs that we are ignoring towards the bottom of the pyramid when we have ADHD because we tend to focus primarily on things at the absolute top because we feel more passionate about them or more personally driven by them, even though from a practical standpoint, from a well-being standpoint, there are things that are probably a lot more urgent that we need to address. So for example, I know that many of us will often ignore really basic aspects of our self-care like getting enough sleep and eating healthy but then try to convince ourselves that we're doing something good for ourselves by engaging in retail therapy or spending hours and hours and hours in mindless escapism because it gives us that quick hit of dopamine and makes us feel better in the moment. And this is exactly why self-care can feel so ineffective and meaningless sometimes. We're trying to address higher level needs with really superficial solutions like a relaxing bubble bath when oftentimes the very foundation of our well being is shaky. I also think that a lot of us forget that there are actually eight dimensions of wellness and that we have needs attached to all of them. I know at least in my own case, I tend to really only focus on the very obvious things when I'm trying to figure out my unmet needs. But in reality, we can have needs that are physical, emotional, social, intellectual, spiritual, occupational, financial, and even environmental. And if we're not paying attention, we might not even realize that we have issues in these areas that are causing us to suffer. And we have to understand that when we have a major unmet need in one of these dimensions, let's say financial, the real act of self-care is not going to be something that's surface level. The real act of self-care is going to be addressing that specific issue in some way. The facial is nice, the movie night is nice, but real self-care involves addressing our needs. 
So clearly, figuring out what our true needs are is a crucial first step in effectively taking care of ourselves. So how do we do this? Well, one thing we can do is to listen to our body's signals. For example, things like headaches, fatigue, stomach aches might indicate that we have an unmet physiological need like proper nutrition, sleep, or hydration. Sometimes it really is as simple as that. We're just not paying attention, especially if we're in hyperfocus. Now, another thing that we can do is to notice our mental state. Let's say we're feeling anxious or overwhelmed or even more forgetful than usual. These could be signs that we have a need for coping mechanisms or stress management or even help with organization. Also, our emotional patterns can be cues. If we notice that we're craving things like validation or connection, this could be a sign that we have a need for social interaction or for activities that align with our values and our passions. I've also found that journaling and self-reflection in general can be a huge help. We can simply take a few moments every day to think about the things that have been stressing us out and the things that we haven't been able to make time for or the things that we feel like are missing in our life. And these can all be great indications of areas that do need our time and attention. And from there, we can start to prioritize these things as a means of true self-care instead of focusing solely on things that really don't make a difference for us. I need to emphasize here, however, that self-care with ADHD is not about depriving ourselves or always forcing ourselves to do some kind of unpleasant or boring task. We do need to still incorporate things in our life that make us happy and that make us feel inspired. It really is about finding creative ways to fulfill our needs in a way that feels engaging and stimulating to us. And of course, this is going to vary greatly from person to person, but ultimately it will lead to improved wellness and increased happiness. So as always, I look forward to hearing your thoughts. I hope you found today's video to be helpful and insightful. If you're looking for further ADHD support, I will go ahead and link an entire playlist in the description box below. I want to thank you so much for being here today, and I hope the rest of your day is extraordinary.